Welcome back to General Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a very critical topic in thermodynamics, and that's how we define the system, the surroundings, and transfer of energy between the system and the surroundings. First, what is the system? Now, in the simplest terms you could possibly get, the system is really just whatever in this universe you are interested in, okay? So, for example, if you wanted to study the water inside of a pot, so a pot of water, all the water that's inside that pot and only that water that's inside that pot, whatever volume of water it is, that's your system, okay? And obviously, we can study various things about that particular system. We can talk about its temperature. We can talk about its phase, whether or not it's a liquid, maybe it's a solid if it's really cold. If we heat it up a lot, maybe it's a gas. And we can talk about energy flow in and out of that water, okay? But in that example, our system is water, okay? Now, the surroundings, in the simplest terms, is basically everything except for your system, okay? So if my system is that pot of water, just the water inside that pot, literally everything else in the universe is considered the surroundings, okay? And obviously, I can have energy flow from the surroundings to the system, but I can also have energy flow from the system to the surroundings. It can go in both directions, okay, depending on the situation. Okay. Another example of talking about the system and the surroundings, okay, if you're talking about a cell in the context of biology, perhaps the, what you care about is inside the cell, the cytoplasm. Okay. So your system in that case would just be everything contained inside the cytosol inside the cell within the boundary of the membrane of the cell. The membrane itself would actually be what's called the boundary, and then everything outside that cell, so the extracellular part of it, would be the surroundings, okay? And obviously there are things that can go uh, between the system and the surroundings in that context outside the cell and inside the cell in both directions, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, one of the things we're going to be talking about extensively in thermodynamics is energy transfer. And at this point in general chemistry, we really are going to talk about two kinds of energy transfers. Okay, one of which is work, and the other is heat. Okay, there's going to be some other types of energies and state functions that we're going to define later on in general chemistry 1 and 2, particularly 2. For now, we're just going to talk about work and heat. So work is typically given by the variable symbol W. And what work is, is it's energy transfer in which some particle or mass is moved some distance. So if a force is applied to some object and it moves, then work was done on that object. A very simple example of this could be um, if you are in the gym and you lift a weight up. Okay, so you do a bicep curl, you lift the dumbbell up. Obviously, that dumbbell was moved from one point in space to another uh, due to the applied force from your muscle. Okay, That's work done on the dumbbell. So in that context, we could say that the dumbbell is our system, and we applied work to the system and moved it some distance. Okay, That's the general kind of work we're talking about here. If you take a physics course, in physics 1 generally, that's the same kind of work you're going to discuss there. Okay, um, Along the same lines, if you go and push on the wall in your house, um, obviously you're not going to be able to move the wall, and it doesn't matter how much you strain, how much effort you put into that, how much force you apply, you're not going to be able to move the wall. And so even though it may seem like you're doing a lot of work, in the context of physics and chemistry, no work is done. Because in order to do work, you have to move the object some distance by applying a force. Okay, has to move some distance. Um, one of the ways we'll see uh, work being done in chemistry, and this will come back to bite you a lot later if you end up taking physical chemistry a course later on, is you can have compression of a gas or expansion of a gas. That's work done. The way to visualize that is if you have a balloon that's uh, filled uh, with a gas, if you were to compress the balloon, so decrease the size of the balloon, you're actually doing work on the balloon because the walls of it are actually moving. Okay? It's compressing, and so that would be an example of work being done. Okay? 
The other type of energy is heat. And heat, I have to say, and you can read about this most likely in a general chemistry textbook, is probably the most misused word in all of the English language. Um, we typically talk about heat as if it's just uh, a thing at um, any point in time, like there's a lot of heat out today. If you're in like, you know, Texas or Arizona or something, there's a lot of heat out in the summer. That's not what heat actually is. Heat is a process, not a physical state or, or a singular object. Heat is a process, and what it is, is it's energy transfer due to a temperature difference between two points in space. So for example, in your freezer right now, in your house, in your freezer, it's obviously very cold inside the freezer. Probably inside your apartment or house, the remainder of the apartments, you know, maybe around 68 degrees, uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever. Obviously a lot warmer in the remainder of the house. Now, if you go and open the freezer and just leave it open, what's going to happen? You have two points in space, one's inside the freezer, the other is the rest of your apartment, and there's a temperature difference. So heat is the transfer of that energy. So the energy is gonna flow from the apartment into your freezer. It always flows from high temperature to low temperature. Okay, But that's what it is. It's a process of energy transfer, that is thermal energy, due to a difference between, a temperature difference that is between two points in space. Okay, now, um, one of the things we're also going to talk about is the total energy of our system. Now, in the context of general chemistry, normally the total energy of the system is given by this letter E. Okay, And what E technically is, is it's the heat plus the work. Sometimes you'll see those flipped, work plus heat. But it's the heat plus the work. The sum of these two things gives you the total energy of your system. Again, in other words, it means if you add the heat and you add the work, it gives you the total energy. Now, in some general chemistry courses, depending, or um, perhaps in physical chemistry, which you may or may not take later on, E can be replaced with delta U, and it means the exact same thing. Uh, sometimes delta U will be called internal energy, but it's basically just the total energy of the system, which is the heat plus the work. All right, so now let's go back to our example initially. We've got a pot of water. So our water inside this pot, all the water in there is our system. Everything else, and really for the most part, we'll consider this heating mantle, is going to be our surroundings. Now, intuitively, in order to increase the temperature of the water, or to heat the water, we have to have energy flow from the surroundings into the system, because we have to have energy flow into the water in order to get it to heat up. So let's first consider the case where we have energy moving from the surroundings to the system. So for this example, it doesn't matter if we're dealing with heat or work. We'll eventually add on other quantities of energy later on. Anytime energy is being added to the system, in other words, energy is moving from the surroundings to the system. When energy is added to the system, those types of energy by definition have a positive value, okay? In other words, if heat, our Q, if heat is being added to the system, then the value of heat is positive, okay? If work is being done on the system, so energy in the form of work is added to the system, that work has a positive value. Again, we'll talk about other energies later, but any of those energies, if they are being added to the system, or in some cases we say done on the system, then those quantities by definition have a positive value. Okay, so when work is positive, that means work is done on the system. When Q is positive, the system is heated, or heat, or the thermal energy is being added to the system. And in, that, in those cases, when the system is attaining energy from the surroundings, those values are going to be positive. Now in the other case, we have the system transferring energy to the surroundings. This is the opposite. Now energy is flowing from the system to the surroundings. Okay. Whenever you have energy of any kind being transferred from the system to the surroundings, those values uh, by default are given negative values. Okay. So in other words, for heat, Q, if thermal energy is being transferred from the system to the surroundings, in other words, that means the system is cooling down and the surroundings are heating up, relatively speaking, then Q is negative. Okay? In the case of work, if the system is doing work on the surroundings, 
Okay, so energy in the form of work is being transferred from the system to the surroundings, then work by definition is given a negative value. So in this case over here on the left, when work is negative, that means the work is done by the system on the surroundings. Or when Q is negative, the system is being cooled. Okay, and again, anytime you have this case, the the values of those quantities are going to be negative. Okay, that's very important to keep in mind. All right, let's do an example problem. So here I have a, a spherical container. It has a gas inside of it, and that gas is going to be my system. Everything out here is surroundings. Here's my problem. 1,500 joules of work is done on a gas when it is compressed. And one thing we'll see is whenever gas is compressed, that's work done on the gas. If, if the gas was to actually expand, that's actually work done on the surroundings. But here it's done on the gas because it's compressed. At the same time, 2,000 joules of heat is released. Calculate the internal energy, also called the total energy of the system, or E. All right, so let's draw a picture like we have here of what's going on, okay? So I have 1,500 joules of work done on the gas. So if that work is done on the gas, that means this work is being added to the system, okay? And by definition, that work would therefore have a positive value. So they don't have to give you the sign here. That's up to you to figure out. And since the work is done on the gas, on our system, that work has a positive value, okay? Now we also have at the same time 2,000 joules of heat being released. That means that the heat, or thermal energy I should say, is moving from the system to the surroundings. And since, we're, since the system is losing energy due to heat because it's moving into the surroundings, that heat of 2,000 joules is getting a negative value here. Okay, so the heat's negative. So when you say heat is released, that implies it's going to be negative. I could have said, though, at the same time 2,000 joules of heat is transferred. You would still know the heat is released because my system here, I, I indicate, has a temperature of 500 Kelvin, whereas the surroundings has a temperature of 300 Kelvin. And since thermal energy always flows from high temperature to low temperature, we would know intuitively that the thermal energy would be transferred from the system to the surroundings. So I didn't even need to say this was released, I could have just said it was transferred, and you would know that the thermal energy due to heat is from the system to the surroundings. And so for that reason, Q gets a negative value, negative 2,000 joules. My problem is to find the total energy, also called the internal energy. My total energy is the sum of the heat and the work, and so that's negative 2,000 joules plus 1,500 joules, and when I add these together, my total energy of this system is negative 500 joules. So if you're ever given a problem with energy transfer, um, they'll usually give you the numbers, the work and the heat. The major job that you have to do is decide whether or not those values are positive or negative, and the big key here is that any time the energy is added to the system, it gets a positive value. But when the system loses energy to the surroundings, those energies get a negative value. And then you just add them together. All right, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the system, the surroundings, and energy transfer. And we see an example problem here. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.